Um, one more thing is yeah. on my mind about uh, Mod Pizza. Yeah. What, what was the? Because I don't ever get to talk to. I don't always get to talk to people who get to to take a concept from and scale it in one location, <laughs> right? And then go to another nation and try to scale. Yeah. What was that like going to a different territory? Like uh, you were in the United Kingdom, right? I was. Yeah, I was. So I had had a little bit of experience with that. I was with Starbucks uh, and I went over and helped open the very first store in the UK on yeah. King's Road. So I had a little bit of experience of working internationally with Starbucks, but very, very small. Um, but with Mod, it was a very different experience, right? We had to choose a partner, and, and Mod chose Sir Charles Dunstan, who had brought five guys over to the UK. Um, and then it's really, you know, starting that culture again, right, from birthing it again yeah. in the UK. And it, it looks a little different in the UK than it, than it does here in the U.S. because it's a different culture, different people. Um, but it was exciting. They, they, had, they identified a great leader who came over from Nando's, John Nelson, who took over the Mod CEO in, in the UK. But... Uh, it was a lot of long hours. So, some of the things you get to consider when I'm hearing from you is when you're transitioning from uh, internationally. Um, why? Bring, well, first, bring on a partner. It sounds like it's something you might want to consider. Yeah. And the second thing you said is considering the cultural differences in that area. Like, can we do mod the United States version in the United, in the yeah, United Kingdom? Yeah. Right. Yeah. People so, people are used to queuing, but they're not used to queuing and then finding a table. Right. Fast casual doesn't exist in the UK. Okay. So our vision of fast casual, the subway, the Chipotle's of the world. Um, doesn't exist in the UK. They're so, there, but they're not yeah. as relevant. So I just want to say that again, just to make sure the listeners heard. Uh, so they're used to queuing, meaning they're used to standing in line, right? But they're not used to having to find their own table. So you have to kind of there's a give and take a little bit to cultural differences. Absolutely, and, and they want to take their time, right? And they're kind of learning. So um, they're learning the menu, right? They're also not. Uh, at least my experience there was uh, the UK crowd in general isn't super used to, to challenging, you know, if you have a menu item, they're not gonna, like in the US where I want no mayonnaise and no tomato and I want it grilled and I want it, uh, you know, it, here modifiers just exist everywhere they go. It's just yeah. a norm, People right? want to customize. It's just We're a norm. We're entitled friggin' Americans. Exactly, in the UK, <laughs> they're like, well, if that's what the chef chose, and I yeah, guess that's the right the product, trust the chef. Yeah. Um, and so I spent, uh, you know, we, we opened, uh, when I left, we'd opened eight in the UK. I, I probably, I got to a point in time in the UK, I'd gone back so many times that uh, my passport I could go through as a UK citizen. That's how often I'd gone back. That's awesome. Um, but you learned a lot, right? It's, it's sourcing product. Product isn't the same. So how do you find the same cheese? How do you find the same pepperoni, the same sausage? And Mod spent, we spent months and months and months trying to identify the same product. So it looked and felt the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a challenge, but it can be I was going to say, that, that in itself is just a challenge, trying to keep it consistent with an ocean in between. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. But, you know, the world's so small, interesting enough, when we started hiring folks, um, the culture of people isn't isn't that different, right? Yeah. The world's so small now. We're, we're all 99.9% .9 exactly the same. Exactly the, the same, day. right? <laughs> yeah. and so, we lose sight uh, of that. We, when we look at people as being so different, but we're all so much alike, especially with how we feel. We, like. And uh, we, we all have the same hard wiring, right? And work environments, right? Yeah. People want to be treated fairly, right? They want to treat as individuals. They want to they want to feel like they're working for something bigger than just a paycheck. So that was something that you spoke a lot about in our first, inter yeah. our first interview, the significance of recognizing that millennials and, and Generation Z want to be seen as individuals. Is that the same thing happening in the UK? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's no different. It's the same 18 to 28-year-old that, yeah. that we tend to hire, I guess, in, in, in this business, right? Right, um, transitional, if you will, at best. Um, trying to find those those key yeah. nuggets, those key folks that really want to stay with you. And again, what I've come to, to realize, whether you're in the UK or Houston, um, people want to work for a company that stands for something, and they want to see the CEO, they want to see the leader. Right? There, there's no longer you can't sit in the in the glass tower. All due respect to the, those that do it, and just kind of dictate down. Right? Yeah. Um, they want to see and they want to know and they want to know you're somebody. I mean, I think Simon Sinek probably speaks to this the best and eaters, yeah. leaders eat last. Right. And it's what happens when you, there's so many uh, degrees of separation. My favorite book right now. It's such a great book. And when there's so many degrees of separation, usually it's like we can only handle about 150 relationships. So when you start to have, put more relationships into your life beyond 150, you lose touch with those people at the very end, right? right. So like that, that culture is being displaced. 